I'm just gonna completely turn off my spool tension knob and make a nice cast out there. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> that was cheesy. That right there is not a sight you like to see. Today's video, we're gonna talk about backlashes as a part of a two-part series. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get backlashes out of your reel once you've already done messed up. Let's talk about it. Well, how's it going folks and welcome back to another episode here on Tyler's Real Fishing. You guys are team TRF and I'm glad you guys have decided to click on this video. Now, if you guys missed the first episode in this two-part series on how to eliminate backlashes and not let this uh, bamboozle happen right here, uh, make sure you guys click up in this corner. It'll be linked there as well as down below in the description below. But I'm going to talk about today three tips that I have learned over the years from talking with pro anglers and fishing myself, of course, for basically my entire life, on how I get backlashes out of my reel effectively and get myself back to being on the water and catching fish very, very quickly. And so the first thing that I wanna say about this video is that everybody gets backlashes. Don't be ashamed that you clicked or searched on this video or somebody sent it to you uh, because they know that you get a lot of backlashes. Of course, if you guys do have buddies that could uh, very much be helped by this video or the, the previous video in this series, make sure you guys are please are sending these videos to your friends and family. Uh, it definitely helps me out a lot when my subscribers share my videos with people that haven't seen them. But don't get offended if somebody sent you this video. Take this as a learning experience and uh, I definitely have had to take a few of these learning experiences throughout my years in fishing as well but I'm gonna explain a few things about how to get backlashes effectively out of your reel but of course we all get them I don't care if you're Joe Schmo or Mike Iaconelli I mean everybody gets backlashes and if you guys have seen my videos I get them quite often and it's not because I don't know how to fish it's just because bay casting reels are, are hard to throw uh, I've been using them for seven eight years now and I still haven't mastered them I don't think you can ever master the bait caster because whether you're skipping a dock whether you're flipping a tree casting a, a 6xd you know 80 yards against the wind those types of situations dictate different types of ways to tune your reel in order to prevent backlashes which is what I talked about in the last video in this video I'm going to talk about once you've already messed up and you have a big old backlash in your reel and you don't know what to do with it what are some common you know best practices that I have found in order to get backlashes out and so in order to tell you guys how to get backlashes out I have to get a backlash so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, I'm gonna take my spool tension knob I'm gonna loosen it up I'm gonna loosen up my brakes a little bit uh, today I'm using the lose tournament MP incredible reel that just dropped from lose uh, just because I'm getting backlashes on this doesn't mean it's a bad reel I literally just opened up all the brakes so that'll happen anywhere so I'm gonna give it a test cast and we're gonna get ourselves a backlash. Now this one right here is not too bad. And I'm gonna start to pull it out in front of you guys. So before I start to talk about the, 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 the tips and tricks that I have, in order to get a backlash out, I'm gonna have you guys watch what I'm doing. Just go through the whole cycle right now. That way you guys can see exactly what I am doing. So when I talk about it, you guys are not confused. And that right there is exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. It's, you, might, you may watch that right now and seem like, oh, I can do that. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can, but there's a few things that I did, three main things in specific, that I did with getting that backlash back in uh, that a lot of people mess up on and end up messing up their line, completely having to respool and wasting a lot of time and money. And I don't want that for you guys. So I'm going to get an even worse backlash. We're going to step in front of the camera and show you guys exactly the three steps that I take in order to properly get a backlash out and get back to fishing. So right here we have your classic backlash. This backlash right here is not very, very deep into the spool, but you definitely have a lot of line that has shot itself up from being tight on the spool to being, I mean, as you can see, bird's nested. And so the first mistake that I see people make is that they are not gentle with it. 
the number one thing I say is that you have to be gentle with your backlash. I see so many people that, that get a backlash and they start to grab the line and just yank it out. I mean, they're yanking hard on this thing and that is no way to treat your line. And sure, you may be able to get a backlash out that way, but it's going to definitely nick your line and bend it and give it memory in ways that will ha cause you heartache and potential fish losses in the future. So when you get a backlash, the first thing I'm gonna say is to be gentle and that's gonna apply through this whole process. So, you know, of course, I hold my bait caster in my left hand here, hold the reel in my right hand. You can pick a bait caster out like this. For some reason, I was just taught and I kind of learned to switch hands. I like to use my thumb to apply pressure and my left hand to pull the line out. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, of course, switch hands. I'm gonna start to pull the line out. And what I do is I'm gonna pull with no pressure with my right hand. And then as soon as I get, you know, too far with my left hand away from my body, I stop it with my right bring my right left hand back and grab the line again where the where the uh the you know the opening eye of the reel comes in and i'm going to keep doing that pull pressure pull pressure pull pressure until i hit some kind of roadblock and in this backlash here it may not be too bad so i might not hit a back i may not hit a roadblock Oh, look at that, perfect. Great, so that backlash wasn't great. I'm gonna get another one to hopefully show you guys the whole three-step process. All right, so hopefully this backlash here is worse, but I'm gonna start by doing the same thing. Start by pulling, giving it pressure, pull my left hand, give it pressure on the right, and being gentle is very, very important. But the first thing that I see here is I start pulling and I get to a roadblock where the line is somehow crimped or, or, or clamped by another piece of line and I can't easily pull it out. And so the, the, the first mistake, like I said, people make is not being gentle. They get to this point and they start just yanking on it, hope, hoping that it will come out. And that is not the way to do it. The way to do it is to reach inside your reel, and I'm hoping you guys can see it on this camera angle here. And you wanna find the piece of line that is either bent or is folded over the main line here you're trying to pull out to get the backlash out. You wanna find that piece of line and you want to pull it out of the reel. So what has happened when you get a, uh, a, a situation like this is that your line has been casting out of the reel it has hit some kind of resistance whether it hit a dock hit the water too early hit a piece of wind not a piece of wind that's weird hit wind coming at you and so the line has shot off the reel and in the the pressure of touching the outside of the reel the spool itself the line is actually doubled back so usually the, the line spools that way it's called a backlash because the line has spooled back over itself and so the line here at this point has actually spooled over itself so i'm going to pick in this area right here i'm going to find this piece of line and i'm going to pull it out of the reel and sometimes it takes just kind of pulling random stuff so i'm going to pull some line i'm going to kind of pull them out of the spool and you may feel like you're making your backlash worse because you're pulling more line out but just like that i pulled some random line it came out and occasionally you can find the exact piece that it's crimped on sometimes it's a whole smorgasbord of, uh, of backlash pieces that are folded over themselves and so you've literally just got to pull and pull and pull but of course pull nicely don't pull with a lot of force until you can find exactly what is holding your line back occasionally it'll take five six seven plus times because you have a, such a bad backlash and uh and then you just keep pulling 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 giving it pressure. You never want to just pull and pull because just like that you see it made a worse backlash without applying pressure. So I'm going to pull until I get the line all the way out. That's the second mistake I see people make is that they think their backlash is all the way out, but they actually pulled it out and let's say it has like a little bit of line kind of left in there and they start reeling it back in. But the problem with that is then, then you are reeling tight line over a piece of loose line, and that is never great for casting. So I wanna make sure I have all the backlash out. I'm all the way down in the spool to where the line is now tight. And the last mistake I see people make, and this is actually a huge deal because it'll cause you to have further problems oftentimes on the very next cast. And that is you literally hold the reel regular and you start reeling that line in. Or when you start reeling that line in, it may look like it is fine on the reel, but actually, if you can feel it, it is very, very loosely put on there, and so the next cast that you make, you're gonna get an even worse backlash than the first time. So I'm gonna peel off that line that I just reeled in, and you're gonna want to grab the reel with your pointer finger and your thumb above the eye of the, of the reel, put pressure on the line coming back in, and then you're gonna wanna reel slowly. 
So that line you want to make sure is coming back onto the reel with just as much tension as you had before. And you're gonna have an issue though with all of this extra line that of course has lots of memory is hanging down there on the ground. And so if you're bank fishing, it's gonna be hanging in the grass. If you're on your boat, your line has probably already spooled itself around the other reels on your boat deck. And so you wanna make sure that you are being gentle with this as well. So you wanna make sure you have pressure on the line with your thumb and your forefinger and you are reeling because oftentimes if you reel too fast, you're gonna to get to a point where the line either grabs something and, and, and rips itself, or you have a lot of this line, let me try to grab it here, a lot of this line that has memory will literally just reel itself up into the reel, especially if you don't have any sort of tension. So you wanna make sure you keep tension on it. If you get to a point where it's starting to kinda of like bunch up, you wanna use your, your left hand to kinda of straighten it out. And uh, like I said, just be totally gentle with it. Right here I was on the, on the ground, so I have a leaf want to get that leaf out of there. Boom, make sure the line isn't tangled up because you're gonna have memory after a backlash. And then as soon as you get back to your main line, you're good to reel back in. And then of course, once you've gotten your backlash out, you wanna make sure when you make a super long cast to maybe check your line every once in a while to make sure you didn't have uh, some sort of crimp or bend in your line that can cause a fish break later on. Some backlashes are so bad that you just have to give up. I've had several backlashes. I've got one in the truck right now that the backlash was so bad, it was so windy that I literally I tried for 15 minutes to try to get the knots out. I couldn't find the specific line where that, uh, where that backlash was happening. And so some backlashes are gonna be a lot easier than others. The few that I got out in today's video, for some reason I just can't get a super bad backlash today on purpose. It's really hard for me to make a bad cast and get a backlash. But uh, those are the three main techniques that I use. Some backlashes take a lot longer than others, but it's gonna happen to everybody. And the last thing is that don't just make the same exact cast with the same exact breaks. I just got a backlash because my brakes were on zero and my spool tension was loose as a goose. So I'm going to crank my magnetic braking to seven or eight. As you saw in my last video, if you guys haven't seen that, click in the corner. I'm gonna tighten my spool tension to where it drops very slowly, make a big cast. And that right there, well, it backlash a little bit. <laughs> that right there is how to do a perfect cast without getting a backlash. So if you guys enjoyed that video, please hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you guys wanna see more content like this, YouTube uh, doesn't do a great job of notifying you guys that my videos are out. I rarely ever show up on home pages. Just for some reason, my, my videos aren't hitting the algorithm right. So if you guys please turn the post notifications on and bookmark the page if you guys are on the desktop version. It would help out my channel so much to have you guys watching all three videos I put out every single week. But with that said, we'll see you guys in the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing.